Alrighty, peoples. Uh, um, been pretty flaming busy trying to outrun all this rain. It finally appears we've had a bit of rain. Um, not much, but the temperatures are starting to drop a bit. This rain doesn't get serious. We are going to be in a drought in this coming summer. Anyway, I've been sawing down box saw with a reciprocating saw as much as I can before it starts raining, creating a lot of large stacks. Um, I went and got uh, one, well actually two that were on rock shelves that were very hard to get to and get lit, I actually got them burnt out. Um, and I'm continuing to work on more stacks, I've been cutting into some of the thickets, uh, basically just lopping them all down and trying to heap them up into piles. Um, yeah, went down to the capital and uh, got some silver, usually I get it through the mail, but uh, I've been there a few times in person, and usually I'm the only person around. There were three of us in there, all at once, trying to get silver. This whole little... <laughs> what the fuck is going on in the financial world, honestly? Greece, you know. Oh, well, how it's going to work is uh, we're going to have a vote, so everybody votes that... They don't want any more bailouts, they just want the bullshit to stop and, and a bit of surety in their life. Um, and then they're going, oh, you know, Syriza, you know, party of the people, and turn around and, well, we're going to try and get another bailout anyway. Oh, we're going to have to promise tax hikes and this and that and friggin' da da, -da. It doesn't matter what way they turn. Apparently, I, I don't know the exact figures, but when you look at the exact figures, apparently they're so deep in, it doesn't matter what they do, that they're buggered anyway. And here they are trying to scramble for another bailout package and all this sort of shit. And it's like, so what? You can string it out for another three months? You know, because the last time it was all on for young and old, you got another three-month lifeline. And this time, it's, it's what, another three months? We're just sort of gasping along and three-month bursts of it. You know, the game's over. The game is absolutely over there. And I can bet my bottom dollar that they will break out of the EU. And last time they went through all this debacle... <coughs> Oh, we can't, though. We can't. We can't technically get it of the EU, because once you're in, you're in, and blah, blah, blah. And, and this time around, a few months later, it's like, oh, well, it's most likely they're going to leave the EU and have to go back, and basically when they change back to their old currency, they lose half the value of their currency. Now, Ukraine in its recent war lost a third of the value of its currency. During the GFC, Iceland, because they were really deeply in subprime um, mortgage bonds and all that, subprime securities. Um, they bailed themselves out. They were really bad. They bailed themselves out, but in the process devalued the currency by one third. Uh, and Greece, they reckon they're going to devalue the currency by a half and go back to the Something starting with D. I keep forgetting what the currency name for Greece used to be. Um, but anyway, I think that's just inevitable. And how's it with, with China? <laughs> you know, all dropping like shit. They dropped to back to 2007 levels. And then all of a sudden the government goes, oh, well, we've got to ban short selling. And then there was something else they'd done. And then they decided that they'd freeze 70% of all the shares, like of all the different companies on the stock market. And then they turn around and go, oh, look, it's been gaining for the last two days. Yeah, dude, that's like only 30% because the other 70% is frozen. So is it really gaining or is it just like we froze all the shit ones and the only ones that are coming back are the ones that are inevitably going to bounce back anyway. 
And can you sort of turn around and say the market come back in the last two days when it's only actually really 30% of the market because that's the only amount you can trade? You know, all these people have just been frozen out of trading. You know, the majority of shares have been frozen out of trading. So, anyway, I think we're looking down towards heading on track for the whole lot to blow up in our face come Shemitah. Um, 13th of September, we'll see how it pans out. Surprisingly enough, though, silver has stayed the same. When I went down there and there was uh, me and two other guys trying to buy stuff there, um, <laughs> the silver price is pretty normal. Just It hasn't gone up, it hasn't gone down, it hasn't seemed to do really anything at all. And it's still quite a reasonable price. And uh, I said to her, well, you got any 1 ounce, 2 ounce, 5 ounce or 10 ounce buybacks? Not completely sold out. And I thought they bought everything in on a, um, like you buy it, pay for it, and then they, you know, bring it in. Uh, but unbeknown to me, they do actually hold stuff um, on stock, you know, like as in they actually have stuff out the back um, that they sit on, and they had some of those ones I called the dog kibbles, and so I got a whole bunch of them, but um, yeah, we'll see how it all goes, but it's just a shitstorm, you know. They got these Greeks on TV there going about this old place that uh, youth unemployment, like, you know, amongst people in their 20s, the unemployment is 60%. Everybody else is 30%. Most people are living on food handouts. And the factories started closing in the 90s. In the 90s! And here they are saying, oh, we want to open the uh, concrete factory back up. This used to be the pride of the town. Dude, is anybody going to buy the concrete? Is there a demand for the concrete? And then you look at the place and it's like rusty as hell. And it's like, dude, this has been sitting here for more than 20 years unused. Your conveyor belts are going to be seized up. Everything else is going to be jammed up. If you do get the thing fired up, all the blooming, you know, flu and the smell of parts and all that, they're all going to be showering with rust when they get fired up for the first... <laughs> The joint's pretty much just been left to rack and ruin, and it's probably half the factory's stuffed anyway. So you couldn't even, you know, it'd take you so much effort to get everything actually back to running order. You know, and then who's going to buy the damn... You know, talk about thinking like socialists. Like, you know, oh, we'll just open it for... And what, is the government going to subsidise it? Because the government's broke. You know. Anyway... When I was down the capital, I uh, went into an Asian area and uh, saw some interesting bits and pieces, and I should have another video on that. I'm actually, I've been working five days a week, and I'm back to six days a week, uh, because somebody's trying to go on holidays, and somebody else might be trying to leave. Um, so I'm back to six days a week, and, uh, you know, I don't have a great deal of time for doing much else. By the time you stuff around with a bit of housework and this and that, there ain't time for much at all. Uh, but anyway, I went down there and uh, saw a very interesting type of propane burner, which I've never seen before. Looks just bizarre. Um, you'll see those, and you might see a bit of box thorn burning uh, in another video, but I'll just whack this one up today. Um, Went to Dezo, which they've, I heard they opened it, I expected a lot of stores, but they only got a handful of stores. And it's basically Japanese owned, in the States you've got dollar stores, we used to have two dollar shops, now everything in those dollar shops, they call them bargain shops or something stupid like that, um, a variety shops. A lot of that stuff is three dollars or five dollars or something like that. And... It's all made in China and has a sort of a bit of an off-putting smell to it all when you walk in the shop. And, uh, well, Daiso is a $2.80 store from Japan. Probably 80% of it's made in China, but it's high quality. 
and the other 20% is usually made in Japan um, and it's like a really high-end dollar store slash two dollar store where everything's two bucks eighty and I went in there and um, had a look through there take these little things for instance hand warmers now in the glorious Australian rip-off retail market you can go into Raise Outdoors and buy these for five dollars each that's nine for two dollars eighty I'll tell you what American retailers could go really well here and uh, well some of them are coming over but anyway um, yeah some of them have seen the light and started to fill their stores with cheap Chinese shit like Big W and Kmart because they know if they don't before long American retailers are going to come over here and basically flatten them um, and we've got not Lowe's, but one that's owned by Lowe's called Masters, uh, Masters Home Improvement, which my brother-in-law uses quite a lot, and uh, that's another one of the ones that's come over. But anyway, that'll, I'll leave that for another video and, and whatnot, and uh, yeah.